You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Um, Eric, I wanted to ask you as a follow-up to kind of what you were saying earlier, are there any current kind of market conditions? I mean, if we came just came out of COVID, inflation is, is a hot topic, supply chain is a hot topic. How are all of these different market conditions influencing the IoT industry? And, or at least how should our audience be thinking about how they play a role, whether they're you know uh, positive things that are influencing the, the market or negative things that are influencing the market? How do you kind of see that playing a role in, um, in, the, in the current state of the market right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when we look at it at a, at a macro level, we see greater tailwinds than headwinds overall, okay. net net. But there are definitely headwinds as well as tailwinds as affecting the industry. And some of them are relative unique, relatively unique. So one of the things that we all went through you know, for the first time, unless you're 100 years old, is a pandemic, right? Um, and that had some very interesting implications psychologically and with the way work is done across the world. Um, so, you know, when we, you know, in March of 2020, we're like, you know, we're, we're like most companies at that time. We, we had offices. Everyone came into the office. That's how work was done. All of a sudden, everyone needed to work from home. Safety first. You know, we weren't sure about what, how the, how the virus was even communicated. Uh, between people and so so everything became remote well what that exposed is if you're going to be remote you can't you can't operate as i like to say you can't go to the data you have to bring the data to you mm -hmm. so this whole concept of physical remoteness got into everyone's minds of how important it is to be able to operate anything including your business or your personal life remotely how do you do that well you need new tools you need connectivity, you need devices, you need all of this infrastructure to be able to do that effectively. That same thought process is translated into business thinking as well. And this is the huge tailwind I think the IoT or digital transformation industry in general is experiencing is everyone is now realizing, hey, I actually can do this. One, you can actually be remote and operate a business and consumers are expecting to be able to have touchless experiences and have things pushed to them, whether it's if you're taking your car in for a service, you don't want to have to just show up, not know if you have an appointment, not know right. how long you'll be there. You want to be able to have an Uber like experience for everything so you can plot your life separately from whatever the service is. So this whole tying together and the mental model breakdown, which COVID forced of we can't do things the way we used to has really gotten people to think about how do we transform so that we can be more efficient, can do things remotely. And then you layer on recently, you know, coming out of COVID. So that thought process is already there. You have many, many companies are just switching to remote first, just like we did and finding out, Hey, in some cases it actually works better. There are certain instances where being in person matter and are more efficient or just socially <laughs> better. Um, right. But generally you can you can do quite well, especially as a software company like us, working remotely, you have access to global talent, you have access to 24 hour time zones now because you can have people everywhere. So there's a built-in efficiency there. Um, you need to manage it, of course, it's different, but that, that type of efficiency and coupled with a lot of sort of traditional brick and mortar companies or physical operations companies, they saw during the stock market run up after the pandemic or while the pandemic goes underway, all the big tech companies, their stock didn't go down. It went way up. And why was that? Because they were the beneficiaries of, of remote posture, right? They mm -hmm. had automated so many things that they were able to actually do them safely um, and more efficiently, and they got larger market share. So the combination of the mental model saying that, hey, we can do things remotely all the way at the executive level of every large company in the world in concert with, hey, these technology companies are actually set up really well to survive in this remote world and thrive has made everyone sort of at the executive level, decision maker level say, Wow, we really need to do this. This is this is this is not something that's a nice to have. It's a must have if we want to compete, mm. if we want to keep put our workers in safe conditions for all many many reasons. This is something that you have to do. Now that that's those are the huge tailwinds, and I think they will predominate over the time. But in the short term, pandemic also caused 
the headwinds, which is, you know, as everyone has probably read, supply chain, that's leading to inflation. But I've, I bl believe uh, that those things are relatively transitory in nature compared to the longer tailwinds. So we're already starting to see through our partners because we're not a hardware company. So we haven't had directly any supply chain issues for our company, but our partners who make hardware and build things in the real world, they've, they've certainly seen pricing increases, lack of availability, but that's already starting to ease. We're already seeing that happening, early signs of inventory levels coming back, things like that. So we're very, we, we think by 2023, a lot of that noise and some of those inflationary pressures will have relaxed and now those tailwinds will predominate. 